What's up, guys? Zach Reininger, and today I want to share some lessons from an unlikely place where I uh, I took took some metaphors from it for my life, and that is pickleball. I took a pickleball course over the weekend, and that might sound silly to some people, but uh, there are a ton of rules that go into pickleball, and I didn't realize this. Uh, I figured it was kind of like tennis. Eh, not really. Uh, um, the more I learned about it, the more I was like, I need to learn more about it. And our gym here offers a free pickleball course, Intro to Pickleball, where they're going to teach you all the rules and all the things. And there's so many different little facets of like, well, you're going here and who's here and your partners and teams and this and that. And it's, uh, it, it felt at times, it felt very overwhelming to me while I'm uh, learning this there. And I know that just like anything else, repetition is king, right? Just like sales training, just like learning a product, learning how to talk to customers. The more you do it, the more you practice, the easier it gets, obviously. Well, there was a, a few nuggets while I was there and I wanted to share them. I, I thought of it when I was happening. I was like, God, that's good stuff. I really like that. It, it kind of felt like a meta, like she was speaking to me and the teacher was very excited about it. She's very passionate about teaching pickleball which if you don't know what pickleball is, by the way, it's like the fastest growing sport in the, in the country. It's like a smaller version of tennis, kind of also like foosball or, I'm sorry, uh, table tennis, you know, ping pong. Uh, uses like a little wiffle ball with these smaller bats or I guess rackets. And it's a smaller space. So you could put like three or four pickleball courts on a basketball court. Um, it's a really popular sport. But she was really excited about teaching us all about pickleball which that was one of my first indications, right? It's a good reminder for me, just like what we do. If we're really excited about what we're doing, and I don't mean in a clown-like manner, but I mean if we're genuinely excited about what we're doing, we're excited about our customers being there. If I'm visiting your store and I'm excited to be there and I'm excited to talk to you about the product, it's a transfer of energy. It's a transfer of enthusiasm. She was so passionate about getting people involved in pickleball that it was contagious. I even, I picked up on it immediately. I was like, this is awesome. And there were many things in there that struck me. And one of, one of the first things she said, which this is a common theme in a lot of aspects of, of business or sport or life in general, and it is slow down to speed up. Slow down in order to speed up. And, you know, if anybody is uh it's, is, is a, a gun enthusiast or likes to shoot. It's, you know, it's like uh, slow is smooth, smooth is fast. And the slower you can move, the smoother your movements will be and the faster you will actually be on the gun. And what this is very similar in the sense of it's not about necessarily being really slow to do things. It's about being purposeful in your movements, not just herky-jerky and moving around, Right. And that's what she's talking about is slow down to speed up because people have a tendency to want to rush in or move over here really fast or do this and like really swing hard and do all these things, which I am very guilty of. That's, that's my personality is just like go all in, um, slow down to speed up. And she's like, you will find if you can stay in tune with your body, the slower you make yourself go, the faster you will be and more fluid things will be. And for me, why that resonated for me is, is because that's how I approach most things is I am a, a just all in. I'm like a shark on things. Like I'm going to go all in as fast and hard as I can. Like let's, uh, that's me. And I have to be very conscious of that in my own life. And I have to purposely try to slow myself down so that I don't try and do too much all at once. And that it actually allows me to go faster. It's very counterintuitive for me. I'm very type A. I want to take control and I want to go do things. And for me, it was a good reminder. It was a wonderful metaphor because even if I'm playing tennis, my wife will tell you I'm very frustrated to play with because I just want to just go nuts. I want to run over here. I want to hit the ball as hard as I can. And that's not what it's about. It's about finesse and controlling the ball and where you want it to go and being purposeful. So that was a really interesting one was slow down to speed up. And then the next one was, is she's talked about not forcing things. Don't force things. You have to like let things happen. And it's very similar to like slow down to speed up. But 
her point being, it was with the racket and the ball. She's like, you don't want to force it. You don't want to hit really hard. You don't want to flick your wrist trying to make it go even faster, which again, is something that I want to do. I, I want to get like, my natural inclination is to just hit the shit out of it, right? Like just, oh, I'm going to smoke this thing, but you don't have the control. You can't get it to where you want to go. You're just putting all your power into it. You're not putting any thought behind it. You're forcing all this stuff to happen rather than laying the groundwork and letting it come to you, letting that ball come to you instead of rushing toward it. Let it come to you and then you know where to direct it. Very similar to working with customers. Don't force it with these people. Try to help them. Slow down to speed up. When they get there, slow down. Get to know them. Don't force them into a direction you want to take them. Allow them to tell you what they want. So you slow down to speed up. You don't force it. I was like, golly, this is some good shit here, guys. All right. Uh, The other one is there's a section right by the net at the front of the net there. And it's called the kitchen. I don't know why. It's just called the kitchen. And that's where you want to hang out is as close to the kitchen as you can. But there's all these rules about stepping into it with a bounce and whatever. But what she was saying was, People get really uncomfortable. This is where you're supposed to be. This is where you want to be, right by the net, right there, because you you can control the ball. You can see where it's going. She said, but it's really uncomfortable, and people naturally gravitate to pulling back because they want to see, they want more distance so they can see better and feel like they're in more control. So, but that's counterintuitive. You want to step into it. You want to be up close. You want to be right there on the edge. And she was talking about how it makes people so uncomfortable. And she said, you will see people who unconsciously, so subconsciously will continue to walk their way back because of the discomfort that's right there at the kitchen. So this is like this barrier that's stopping people. It's the discomfort. It's being so close and things happening so quickly that they get uncomfortable and they pull back. And you might say, well, isn't that a form of slowing down to speed up? Not necessarily. It's leaning into the discomfort. It's being ready. And as she just, as she broke it down, being closer right there at the barrier actually makes you faster, makes you be able to react and do what you need to do with that ball. So the other thing that she talked about is people have a tendency to do too much, which makes it much harder. It's this too much running around. It's too much like this whole like jumpy attitude of like, oh, I'm going to run all the way over here or run. And they want to do a backhand this way when in rea- then they left all this space behind them wide open for their competitor to hit that ball back in because they're standing at the kitchen. So while we're all scattered around running and doing all these different things and focused on this, that, and the other, we're not focused on anything. We're actually so distracted and so spread thin that we're not able to stand right in the kitchen, slow down, and focus in order to speed up. And I took so much out of this class beyond uh, a level of frustration, you know, of like all the rules and, and all that. But I took so much out of this class that I did not expect to. It's just a pickleball class. But so many things she was saying, I felt like she was speaking to me of reminders that I needed. I needed to slow down a little bit to go faster. I needed to focus more in order to go further. I needed to be able to continue to step into that kitchen, you know, the discomfort. Keep pushing into that and stop trying to force things. You have to allow it. You have to do the work to allow those things to happen and then guide them the direction you want. And this might be a very like, uh, I don't know if the word's like esoteric or philosophical conversation around a sport, but I mean it when I say it. that was what I took out of this. I took so much more out of this and it was a wonderful reminder for me of just like the parallels to life. And I kept talking to this one guy that was there. I was like, Am I the only one that feels like there's the, all these metaphors for life that keep coming out in this? And it was a beautiful thing, man. It was, uh, it's, it's a reminder of how sports and teams and teamwork and working together and all these different things can apply to our lives. It was also a reminder to me of how good it is for me to do things that are uncomfortable. I remember when I walked in that class, I was, I was immediately saying like, I don't want to do this. this. This is stupid. Like, what am I doing? I'm 40, almost 41 years old. Like, I don't need to learn how to play this. My ego was chirping, right? But it took that class to kind of slow me down so that I could learn. And it reminded me of so many things that I need. It's that inner voice and all these things that I do. I know we all do them. 
but I only know mine. And he's a loud, 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 loud dude in there. And it was an awesome reminder. So as soon as I got out of there, I immediately thought of this. I made some notes on it. Because like I've said before, when things impact me or impact my life, I try to make a note because I want to share it. Because maybe there's a little nugget in here that you could get out of it. The whole slowing down to go faster. You know, don't force things. Work with the team and communicate with your team. Lean into that kitchen. Get into that discomfort zone. Those things all are going to let us go further together. So that's my reminder for the week. That was what I came away with. Maybe there's more lessons in pickleball other than being humbled, uh, which I was soundly humbled by, um, I, would, I would venture to say, an elderly man um, with two bad knees, with knee wraps, elbow wraps. Uh, he was a whopping five foot three, guessing 79, 80 years old. And it was so awesome to see where I'm trying to run all over and do all this. And he is embodying all these things. He's, he's too immobile to really chase it down and do it. So he's allowing things to come to him. He's not for, he doesn't have the, the dexterity and the strength to smoke it. And he was able to outplay me handily because of it. And when you would look at him, you'd be like, oh, it's game on. It was me and some other guy who's super fit, you know, we're right there. And like this, this, Older dude just couldn't move that much, just kind of very gently hit the ball. This, it was all finesse. And it was such an awesome reminder. It was very humbling. I loved it. I'm going to go back for more punishment. Um, and I just had to share with you guys. I thought you might enjoy hearing about it. So I appreciate you guys. I love you. Thank you so much for watching. And we'll talk to you soon.